the day has finally come. We've got the 80 back in the shed and it's getting upgraded. Now we went with e-lockers. TJM don't actually make air lockers anymore. I went down and spoke to them. They don't make them anymore. They had only rears in stock. I didn't want to run a rear that was different to the front. I just prefer to have the same. So that's why I've gone with the e-lockers and they're readily available. So, as you can see, we're going to be twin locked. Front and rear difference, full diff overhaul kits. So I'm pretty much going to do all the bearings, everything again. And I'm going to start on the back. So I'll set this up and I'll put this in here now. Pooley, so on YouTube, Uncle Pooley, big help. His video, um, he done one a couple weeks ago regarding diffs in Big Bad Baz. Great super super educational and that's what actually made me go i can do this myself and timmy has heart he was the other one that's done an e-locker and same thing watched his they're both big helps so go check them out i'm going to set this camera up jack this rear up take the wheels off pull the axles out and uh off we go the rear i can actually just loosen my axle and just sleeve that out um what i'm going to do with my bearings too is i'm going to put them in the oven to heat them up and then just slip them over my new center once it goes on. Right, now I'm gonna go loosen these here. So this is your rear axle. Now I've got to do a full service on this car anyway, it's due for a service. So when I was out the other day, I got some spare one of these because sometimes they can be a bit of a pain. So what you've got, you've got your nut and then there's a washer and then there's a cone washer. And the cone is sometimes a bit of a prick to get out. And if you damage one of them, you'll never get the nut back on. So they're handy just to have spares. There's one. Once they start coming, they, they all come pretty easily. So six, beautiful. Now I'm gonna take and chuck the front wheels, take it out of gear. So it's not splined in. I got my chocks here. That's one axle. So that will be now out of the center. And now I'll go do the same steps on the other side. If I really wanted to, I could take that all the way out. And while I'm sort of doing this, I might even check on my bearings and stuff. So we've got the axle out both sides. We'll get this tail shaft off. It'll loosen them. There's four bolts around that. I believe they're 14 mil. Drop that down, loosen all the center bolts get my jack under here and we'll use the jack to help me get it out and also got to drain our diff too so um, as for the diff when you drain it take your fill one out which is your top one and then take your drain plug out it will help gravity feed the oil out and if you don't you're gonna have trouble getting the fill one out afterwards and the best thing about rebuilding all of this is I should be able to get all the seals back together Careful not to drop your tail shaft as well. You don't want to bend it. <laughs> Just nice and gently get it down. You could take it off, move it out of your way completely. I'm just gonna roll it to this side so they don't get my jack in here and pull it out that way. I've also got solid spaces for inside here. Rebuild this pinion as well. Oh, there goes my fill plug. And then we're gonna go and crack this drain plug and try not to do what I always do and don't drop the diff plug in the diff oil. Lovely. Let that drain out. I'm just gonna turn it, get it just to catch what we can. Like that. Exactly what I didn't want to happen. <laughs> How good. Maybe the front one will just Forget about the jack. Cool. So we've got the diff center out. I've done the bench. I've got a paint texture. I have to mark one of these sides. So when I put it back, it goes back the same way. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take that locking tab out. Get that one off. A little lock tab. And then this side here is going to be my side that I mark. You can mark it, you can center punch it, you can do a few things. I'm just putting two big red marks on it, paint texture. We're pretty much just gotta 
undo all this, take the center out, and then I'll have a look at the pinion, see what it's like. Now the reason you mark them is because they're identical, and you just want them to go back how it came up. The diff was good beforehand, so you'd hate for it to go back any different. So that is my old diff center. So I need to take the crown wheel off, which is these bolts here, and then I have new bearings to put in, which I'll heat up and drop onto my new center. Open this up. Oh, I'm mad. I think this diff's been rebuilt already. On my pinion here, it has SS, which I'm guessing, in diff terms, would be solid spacer. Just trying to get this crown wheel off. She doesn't seem to want to come. If I got no idea what I'm doing, I'm just having a crack. 80 series ones, just so you know. These bolts don't want to come out, so I'm thinking I'm going to have to take that piece off. I'll show you what I mean. So, see those bolts in there? They're not, like I'm hitting the hitting a tab so I can't actually get the crown wheel out so these bolts here I'm assuming will disconnect it from that center part there and then once I take that off I'll be able to get that crown wheel off it's my hopes hopes and dreams just here and I was correct so that comes up enough we can get the bolts out so I go pull all these bolts out Actually, I think it needs to come off all the way. If you ever wondered what the inside of a diff looks like? So that there's a, I'm pretty sure it's an LSD diff, which is a lip, limited slip differential. So it allows both axles to spin different. Same design with the, the locked version. It just has a mechanism that can lock it. Is all. I'm going to bolt that back together so it's a solid diff still. You can see where your axle splines in, everything splines in together there. So that's existing diff center back together. So we'll now move that out of my way. We'll go and open our new diff center. Our locked one, that there has to bolt to. Once we do that, then we can go from there. So I just had to work out what was the front and what was the rear diff rebuild kit. Um, so this is my rear, because it didn't actually say, it just says diff overhaul. I'm sure I could have found it online. This is the rear because it's a circle gasket, and that is the front because it's the same shape as what the front axles or the hub covers are. So, I've got my rear, and we're just unboxing the rear locker. So, there's all my wiring, stickers, um, switches, and whatnot, a couple of zip ties, and then that's my new diff center. So, I've just gone and turned the oven on and put my carrier bearings in it. Whilst we do that, we're going to bolt temporary or softly bolt this crown wheel up to the new locker so it's ready for bearings when we get to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this. We're going to open it up a little bit more. We're going to drop on the crown wheel over that. And then we'll have a fully, fully locked diff. We're going to go and have a party after this, I reckon. Might have to get myself a drink. Now, I don't know how long I've got to put the bearings in the oven for. Um, I'm going to go with like 10-15 minutes. I've got it on max to expand it as big as possible. Um, I'm going to put my welding gloves on because I dare say they're going to be a little warm, a little toasty. Now we flip that. Gently rest it there. Everything I'm doing is gently. So far, looking pretty good. And then this bit here is the bit you've got to drill out the side of your housing. But I'll do that once it's all bolted back in and then I'll shove that through. It's pretty 
tough and durable actually, which is good. So I'm gonna go grab a bearing. I've got my gloves and I'm gonna make sure that to test it and see if it does sleeve on. If it sleeves straight on, then sweet, I'm good. If it doesn't even look like it's gonna fit, I'll go put it back in the oven. So I'll be back in a second with that. So that's a no go. So I'm gonna undo one by one and thread lock it off, which I should have done to begin with. And we just want a dab, because it will spread. So I've now got all of them thread locked. As you can see, I've put a dot on every single one. So I've got thread lock on all of them. I've only just taken them tight with the drill. Um, I've still got to go around and torque them all up with a proper torque wrench. So I'm just going to run inside, grab one of those bearings. I'll put my welding gloves on, they're still inside. Hopefully it's hot enough now just to drop to drop straight over that. Then we'll tension everything up and that's pretty much ready to go back in. Just got to test that pinion out and maybe do the rear pinion seal. That one just fell on. So that one was heated perfectly. I literally just sat it there and a bit of a twist and it just went sleep. So now that will cool down. Once that cools down, that bearing's set, which, wonderful. Good on me. Well, now that I've got this here, while that gets cold, what I might do is I might torque them up. So I ordered my, I got my locker off Superior and Superior send you um, the fitting instructions. So hopefully in that should have the torque setting. This here has 120 Newton meters. So I'm gonna get my torque wrench and we'll get them ready. I've just thought to myself, how am I gonna know which one I've torqued when I start? And then I just remembered, I've got two paint textures. So I've got white and I've got red. Red was for thread lock, and then I'm gonna put a white dot for all the white ones that have been torqued up. The white. That's the last one. All right. So now, if I just go like that, they should all click straight away, stay in there at talk. Now I'm going to run inside, grab my other bearing, sleeve it over this. That is pretty much built. Beautiful. And just sleeves on just like that. It's a little hot. So we'll let that cool down while I have a look at this pinion. So I got my pinion out and it had a brush spacer on it. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and put a solid spacer in it. I'm also gonna take this dust cover off, put my new dust cover on. That's a rear pinion seal, which could be a little bit of a challenge to get off. It's probably been on there for 30 years. So that bearing there, we can replace. Had a bit of water in there once upon a time. Doesn't look the greatest. And then the way we're going to rebuild this is pretty much the exact uniform way it come out. The only bearing that won't get changed is this one because I don't have a bearing press. That's your crush, crush spacer, your solid spacer. So much thicker in diameter and new dust cover. So we're going to clean all this up, drop this one on. So I've got the pinion in now with the solid spacer. Took me a while, just a lot of playing around. Just making sure I could get it as tight as I possibly could um, for the whole bearing preload. I'm just cleaning this face here. So now we're just putting the putting it all back together. Remember you gonna put your sides that you've got marked together. I'm just going to tension them softly. Then I'm going to do my backlash. Which I have brought a backlash tool. So at the moment I'm just trying to get my um, backlash correct. And I was going off feelings at the moment. And um, 
this one here needed to get closer. So what I've just done with this one here to tighten this, which will pull these teeth closer to my pinion. And if I tighten that one, it would pull my teeth further from my pinion, which is your backlash. And then you get a dial gauge, which I'll check in a minute. But if I hold this down here and try and twist it, you shouldn't really have any movement. There's a set measurement, which I'm about to do and test. So you get a magnetic one of these, you sit it on, you put this inside one of the teeth and it will flicker and tell you how much black backlash you have. So I'm going to set that up and we'll do that. The 1.6 mil of backlash. I'm going to get a little bit tighter. I might try to get 1.4. Um, so in order to do that, we need to tighten this one a smidge and then loosen the other one. Favor. Mm -hmm. If I hold this up, can you wind it in? That's very wobbly. Yep, awesome. Cool. So I've got it tight now. I've got my little locking pin. So that goes in there, like so. And what that does. It stops from the bearing preload spinning. So we'll go and tension that. We'll lock our other side. And then there's a special little tab, this fella right here, that come in. And it, there's little arms over here and it sort of locks them on. I have a funny feeling we should have probably put that on before we did all this. We'll find out in two seconds. Answer your question? Yes. Should have went in beforehand. Why do you do this to me? Do what? Building this. Done. <laughs> so that will go on there. Don't forget your little pins. Because if you do it, you'll have to take it off and your wife will hate you. I was just cleaning my threads out. One of them didn't want to go back in. So I've got a tap that is the same thread pattern. And now what we'll do is we'll test them by a finger first. Put it in with fingers and, um, and then went to tighten it with the drill. And a bad sign is when it talks straight away, the drill. You don't want it to talk straight away. You want it to go all the way in and then sort of just talk as it seats. Um, so we just had to do a bit of playing around with that. But we are pretty ready to put this back in. This is the bracket I was talking about, so it's obviously got to go in beforehand. So, putting that in now. Just working backwards like we do. Because who wouldn't like working backwards? I know um, Gemma does. Alright, Gemma. Why? No, they don't stink. They smell awesome. So I've got the locker and everything in now, the carry bearings, preloads all set, Loctite torqued up, and we've just gone and drilled a hole for our cables to come through. Might make it a bit better. For our cables to come through, I've just got that there, and it just starts to poke through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some silicon on it, some super red high temp silicon. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but we're just going to go chuck some silicon on it, pop that through, and that's pretty much it to bolt back into the into the car. Then we can start doing the front one. So we're just scraping my old silicon off. I've got a new gasket. Um, I'll show you in a second. New gasket, and then I always use. Uh, aviation former gasket and paint that onto the gasket as like a, a second gasket I guess you could say but yeah last time I did this I um, didn't have a gasket so we just used the silicon 
because um, it was leaking, which turns out to be my opinion seal. I'm just hoping we put this back in and we have no problems. But the only way you find out is by doing it. You gotta fuck around and find out, don't you? This is the hard part. Just trying to get it up. I don't know how well you can see it, but the cable actually comes out on top, which is good. We'll bolt all this back together, close up everything I have for um, the rear. Beautiful, beautiful. Right, so we've got rear diff back together. It now identifies. Just identifies as a rock, locked diff at the moment because I'm not sure if it works. I dare say it will work. I can't say why it wouldn't, but we just got to do the wiring. Hubs are all back together. We've just taken the front wheels off the front. From my understanding or my thought process, because it's a CV in the front, I actually have to take the wheel, the brake caliper, and the rotor off to get the CV out. So we're just in the process of doing that. As you can see, we've got wheel off here, wheel off there. We're gonna go and take these little hub bolts off, take the caliper off, pull the rotor off. Then hopefully we can just sleeve out. And then we've got to disconnect the front tail shaft, take the center out, and go and put our new lock and center in. Hopefully the second one should be a bit quicker because I've learned obviously what I sort of got to do from the back one. It's going to be pretty much the same in the front, which should hopefully speed the process up a little bit. But we'll get going. I'm not going to bother filming pulling hubs and stuff apart. It's pretty much the same process as the back. Take your hub cover off. Brake calipers are just two bolts in the rear. Pull it off. If there's anything interesting, I'll put the camera back on. So I got one side of the front end back together. It's pretty much just a rebuild of the swivel hub. Um, there's a good video on YouTube. It goes for oh, an hour or something. It's actually one of the best videos I've ever seen about rebuilding your front swivel hubs. That's where I've got the former gasket aviation stuff from, um, from that video. So yeah, we've built that, we're gonna put this wheel on, go build the other side. Yeah. Whoa. A castle, yeah, good boy. So we're gonna put this wheel on, jump onto the other side, um, and then get into the wiring side of it, which hopefully shouldn't take too long, we'll see. So if my wheel falls off, we know who to blame. Isn't that right, you? Yeah. Yeah, you make sure they're on nice and tight. Oh. Oh no. Nah, wrong way, wrong way. So we did all the wiring, I didn't bother filming any of it because it's all going to be um, sort of unique to everyone's car. Like plugging into the locker is pretty simple and then you've just got to work out where you want to run everything. Um, but as for mine, most of mine runs up in here and then I run up and across my dirty filthy engine bay. Um, the rear one I've sort of got hidden up on top of the chassis up there which runs up and over, the front one sort of just goes straight up. But I do still have, I still got the front wheels jacked up, so I tested the front. Um, it's obviously ignition on. We've got one and two, rear and front and rear. I'll leave my front on and I'll give you a, give you a quick demonstration. So as you'll see, this one spins. And once it locks in, they're both now spinning. So, front one's working, I put it in reverse, go back, and same, they both start spinning. So we'll probably finish that here, because all I really got to do is just tidy up, just put oil back in the diff, um, front and rear diffs, and then I think I'm ready to go. So, yeah, we'll probably finish that video here but you got the idea of everything you needed to for the for building the diff um, which is pretty much it and then the wiring side of it's pretty straightforward it comes with everything you need it's just fiddly making sure you get it in the right spot well that's what I did anyway 
yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.